In this video, I'm going to teach you a trick to improve your MCQ, and it involves sniffing out nonsense answers that are designed to misdirect you. Hey guys, this is Mikey from AVO Prep Academy, and on this channel, we cover AP Biology content. And with just a bit of time left until the exam, I thought I'd take this moment to give you guys some real ammunition in immediately improving your MCQ performance, and it involves knowing which answers to never choose when presented as an option. And here are the top five most commonly presented misdirections by them folks over at College Board. Coming in at number five, we have different cells of an individual have different genes. This is a common answer to a question that usually involves why cells of a single organism may express different proteins at different times or in different tissues. It's really a question that pertains to the topic of cell specialization and even gene expression regulation. But an answer that you should never choose is one that implies that different cells have different different genes. This is completely wrong as all multicellular organisms begin as a single cell with a set of chromosomes that are subsequently and fully copied onto daughter cells that make up the multicellular organism. So it goes without saying that all cells of a single organism are essentially clones, meaning that you should never choose an option that states that different cells contain different genes. At number four, we have enzymes were used up during the reaction. One of the major facts about enzymes that we learn is that enzymes are completely reusable once they're finished catalyzing their substrates into their products. This can be a common trap because enzymes can play a role in just about any system or pathway apiology can test you on. In particular, watch out for this as a misdirection in questions that involve enzyme kinetics or enzyme catalyzed reaction rates measured across time. So if any of these graphs that you see up on the screen ever show up, be on the lookout for this trap. And before we continue, if you found this content useful so far, be sure to click that like button and share it with a friend who may be more cooked than you. It really means a lot to me that we all share the suffering. All right, so now on to number three. Don't ever choose an answer that says the environment forced mutations or a change in an individual. We all learned in unit seven that selection acts against traits that are already existing within the population. But a common misconception is that somehow the environment forces individuals to change, when in reality, the change occurs at the level of the population across generations. We may see this with antibiotic application questions or even insecticide usage, where the test will sneak in something along the lines of of bacteria developing mutations in response to the environmental pressure, but don't ever fall for this trap. It's just way too easy to detect. Number two is a bit trickier to detect, but here it goes. In any question that describes a pattern of evolution that appears to involve selection, you should never choose answers that contain mechanisms that are inherently random. Let me explain. For instance, imagine that the background information refers to some ancestral lizard species that diverged into three daughter species, each of which containing specific traits that are suited to their survival in their new environments. But you should never choose an answer here that implies random mutations, genetic drift, or even more specific instances of drift like the bottleneck effect in explaining the trends observed within the background information. Here, you wanna focus on the idea that individuals with traits that help them survive allow for greater reproductive of capacity leading to the accumulation of those traits within the population that ultimately resulted in speciation. That's just natural selection 101. And finally, at number one, we have a group of answers that contain way too specific information about a system or a species that we should not be expected to know. For example, the answer might stipulate that a particular enzyme can change its shape on a seasonal basis to produce different effects in different times of the year, or that a particular species of amphibians will transition from a carnivore to a herbivore in the absence of their favorite insect. All these are pretty ridiculous assumptions that you'd only be able to make if you were actually taking a course at a college on these specific proteins or amphibians. In AP Biology, it's always recommended that you look for an answer that covers the broader basis for the most fundamental of the facts in biology. So in the example above about proteins doing different things at different times, the true answer might be that the level of protein expression may change due to changing environments. And that would be using gene expression regulation ideas from unit six. Or in the case of the amphibians who lost their favorite food, we might just see their population decline, an idea from unit eight. Now these are the most obvious, but the most accurate answers that you can choose based on the context of what AP Bio is all about. It's an introductory biology course that spans a huge amount of content. So big themes and big ideas are what you're expected to know. 
Look, I know that MCQ can be tricky, but I hope this video has helped you in sharpening your ability to detect common misdirections employed by College Board. And if you think this video has been helpful to you, be sure to like and subscribe for more content just like this one. Who knows, I might do a part two of this video. This has been Mikey with Able Prep Academy. We'll see you in the next video.